It's been a uh, it's been a long couple of weeks. The garden looks great. Uh, my dog's well exercised, but um, yeah, I'm glad to get started. To be honest, you know, Huddersfield's a, a real club, good club, but uh, I definitely see this as a, a sort of step up and with a Category One academy status and the supporter base and and, and all them different factors. Uh, the board was a big part of it. You know, I was really fortunate that I worked at Huddersfield, um, where we were owned by uh, by a guy called Dean Hoyle, and I had a strong relationship with Dean. And I see the club here with the strength of the board has been very similar. You know, it didn't turn me on the idea of, you know, having a board maybe based in America or, or China and, and these type of things. So uh, coming to a club with that sort of solid foundation for someone like myself gives me the opportunity to do my work with that sort of security and sort of structure behind me uh, and a real clear sort of direction as, as sort of where we want to go. And, you know, I've got to say, um, only day one, but I'm happy to be here. It's an interesting one because, you know, sporting director isn't massively common in England, it's becoming more common, you know, I mean it's obviously Chelsea have got one, Man City have got one, so uh, Liverpool have got one, so you know the bigger clubs are starting to embrace it, obviously we had the model at Huddersfield, uh, we just called it a different sort of title. The remain effect is running the football department of the football club, you know, having a real strong relationship with Steve Stone, uh, who runs the business side, and then the overlap between the sort of two of us, but in, in essence it's running the football structure, whether that be recruitment, academy, uh, sports science and medicine, uh, obviously managing and, and uh, looking after the head coach. I've got a clear idea on what it will look like at the end, you know. Um, I don't think this is a football club where I need to come and rip everything up. You know, if I look back at my time when I went into Huddersfield, it was a club where there was a lot of poor practice going on which I needed to affect. I don't think I'll find that here. Um, I think there's key areas which we need to affect quickly. You know, we need a head coach for a start. Um, and we need to obviously it's a big summer in terms of recruitment you know and, and you know let's sort of be frank the job in a nutshell will be judged on how good the recruitment is and how good the head coach is it's it's no use the sports science and medical department looking fantastic if we recruit the wrong players I know that and I'm realistic to that um, so I think you know I know what the priorities are and you know I'd like to think that I've done it before and, and I can certainly do it again listen before I spoke to the club you know I did my research because I, I wanted to know what I'd be potentially walking into to see if it would be any of interest to myself you know because I was in a great job I didn't need to uh, I didn't need to leave Huddersfield so I think when you do your research and you, and you see the level of staff which are here in certain areas you know it makes you excited to think that Paul oh, the starting point is really good um, I just think maybe the club has uh, lost, a, lost a little bit of direction uh, certainly lost a little bit of identity and you know it's my job to bring the head coach in to lead that uh, on the on the pitch on the training pitch and in the in the stadium uh, and then for me to look at it from a whole greater scale and help educate the board as to this is what we need to do to to make the club I don't want to say modern in its approach because you know what, what we did at Huddersfield got often talked about as being very sexy and all the rest of it but we're only doing what Liverpool were doing in the 70s if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves um, but it's my job to sort of educate people that this will take a little bit of time um, but we'll get there and this is what it will look like at the end so stick with it this is what it'll look like well, I'm a young guy but I always say to people I've had the best football apprenticeship you could ever have you know I was never good enough to be a player I then started my coaching badges at a really early age I started at 16 while I was still in school because I thought I want to work within this industry I don't know what I want to be I didn't at 16 go I want to be a sporting director but I knew I wanted to work on the football side you know and I did all my coaching badges got my pro license all, all these different things but then I got you know I got some fortunate breaks so when I was at Wrexham I got to work with a guy called Joey Jones who's won two European Cups as a player 70 odd caps for Wales um, you know he's somebody who has been at the top top level of the game and for me as a young early 20s to work with someone like that was, was an unbelievable opportunity then I get the opportunity to go to work at Liverpool and again Rafa Benitez is the, the manager uh, Damien Connolly comes in as sporting director Kenny Dalgleish worked within the academy with us for a short period then becomes head coach you know I've worked with some people who are in their fields the best in the world and at that stage I was a young 20, mid 20s and I'm thinking wow I'm working with these people who at the top of their game and, and that's where I say I had a real fortunate apprenticeship um, so I've been really fortunate who I've worked with um, and I've had a taste of every department so um, I've done recruitment from under six 
all the way to, to senior level signing, you know, some players who've gone on to represent the country at the highest level um, through to a free transfer from Germany. You know, so I've had a real wide sort of scope um, in terms of transfers. You know, I've worked within an academy, so I understand the importance of getting a, an academy right and making an academy successful and how it can save your club a lot of money and how as a football supporter you want to see one of your own players on that pitch you know I don't care what anyone says it does mean more seeing a player from Norfolk who you know is a Norwich fan playing for Norwich than someone from another part of England or, or Europe you know I, I want to be a part of a football club and get promoted to the Premier League and become sustained in the Premier League and an academy which constantly produces players a recruitment department which we become the envy of you know, I want Norwich City to be talked about like Southampton are talked about in terms of what they do. Um, and we'll do it our own way and we'll do it differently to Southampton. But if I'm, if I'm honest with myself and with people, I didn't see that being Huddersfield. And when an opportunity comes to a club like this, this is probably the first club where I felt strong board, big club, good infrastructure, scope to do your job. Um, and for me, this club ticked all them boxes. So that's uh, fortunately why I'm here.